quickly and here is the restaurant to go to my school. Yeah, these images are beautiful. I love underwater things like this, Lewis. Here are the directions, everybody. After I left my house, I stopped the engine of my bottom motor, and then I start to go to my school. Firstly, I need to come across a jungle of seaweed, and this seaweed jungle is the most beautiful jungle in my childhood. You can see a lot of colorful fish and starfish, and then I need to turn left to a moment village. That is the way where I meet my moment friend. His name is Tony, and then I carry him to my school. At the end of the village, there is a crossroad. I need to turn left again into a shark cave. And this is a cave with a lot of ties of sharks. But I don't worry about it because these sharks are very friendly and cute. Then I go over to the car, the cave, and turn right. Finally, I arrive at my school after a long trip. The class starts at half past 8 a.m. and I come to my school at 8 a.m. So I have uh, 30 minutes to go to my school cafeteria to have breakfast. The breakfast is very good. It's made of kind of uh, seaweed and pure chocolate. My day is a little bit busy, but whatever, I still love and enjoy it every day in my beautiful city. And that is another model in our underwater city, which is called Atlantic City. How about your city? Nice, Lewis. I like this. Yeah. You have a water motor thing to drive around in. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. And then these pictures one more time. This one's great. The old ancient one, the seaweed and pilchard. And then this is really cool. This looks like those alien UFO bases, they say, are under the water. There's some pictures of that. All right, Mr. John, here it is. Thank you, John. Can you read the one with this beautiful Harry Potter map? If I can open this up, download completed. Okay, where's my download from Mr. John? Teacher. Hey, what? <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the underwater city. Half a yes. water motorcycle is uh, the ultimate uh, uh, what <laughs> water motorcycle. I think so, Lewis. It's Lewis's invention, uh, this underwater city. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Nice work there, Lewis. And uh, awesome. let's see. I'm going to find that uh, John 11 thing. Because you sent it in the chat box, but I'm going to have to go to this one here, John. Uh, Why? Because it's a little bit difficult to find, John. Um, there's John 12. There it is. The beautiful map, John. Okay, yeah, I got it. I just had to do it in a strange way, Mr. John. Are you ready? You have to read this, John. Okay, this is the map he did of Harry Potter. This is a beautiful map, John. I really like this. Hogwarts Castle. I didn't know it looks like this, so I don't know where. Did you get this from the book? No, I get it from the internet. Very cool. Someone really figured out what it looks like. That's really cool. All right, John, here you go. Okay. Today, I will describe the whole map of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. At the bottom of the map, there is Hog Hogsmeade Station, where students usually get up from the Hogwarts Express. Right up is the lake, and there are little boats for first years to sail across. There is also a giant squid there, and they usually help first year students to get back up to get back on the boats when those students fall. Above it is the Hogwarts Castle. This is where Harry Potter learns about defense against the dark arts, charms, transfiguration, astronomy, potions, the history of magic, ancient runes, art mercy, domination, and muggle studies. <laughs> there are also the common rooms, and the kitchen is there too. Right to the right is the greenhouses. Harry usually heard learns herbology there. 
Profit is the walking willow where her father in his second year has crashed Mr. Weasley flying car with Ron. Mm. And the car is nearly crushed to smithereens. <laughs> Above it is Hagrid's hut. He is Harry's, Ron, and Hermione's best friends. Uh, Hagrid's Hagrid hut. The Wamping Willow and the Greenhouses are right next to the Forbidden Forest. And that is where the secret of the whole castle lies. Uh, On the top left corner of the lake, there is the Bloom Shed. Next to it is a fairly flat and clear space for flying lessons for first years. Above two of them is the Quidditch Stadium, where Harry Potter plays and wins many matches against other house, other houses. Uh -huh. On the top left corner of the map with mountains is the Hogsmeade Village. Students have to have a permission slip signed by their parents or guardian to go there. And there are many mountains. And around the Quidditch Stadium, the main castle, the lake, the greenhouses, the walking willow, Hagrid's hut, and the forbidden forest, there <laughs> is a wall. <laughs> and I think it's built to protect the castle from intruders, like Lord Voldemort, for instance. Alice is showing you the books that she has. Thanks, Alice. Uh, what's interesting is, John, you did this all from the book. You condensed it. You pushed all the information, and then you read this map. So this is, I said, excellent work, John. Thanks, Alice, for the Harry Potter book. She was showing which one it's in. But, John, you did this all from memory in the map, so that's really, really good. So thank you for that, John. All right. Uh, let's see. I want to check one thing, John. Um, Tim, you raised your hand. What's Tim's comments now? Mr. Tim. Uh, teacher. Yes. Uh, uh, look in the chat box. All right. Is this going to be crazy? This better not be explosive. Tim used to put bombs in the chat box. <laughs> what is this? That's you in the chat box. Wait, what? <laughs> what is I don't get this. What's going on? You're doing some kind of like Harry Potter thing, Tim. <laughs> All right. Look at the chat box. Okay, where's I'm looking at the chat box. Tim, it is the book zero, Alice said. Oh, Tim, no, 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 we can't do Minecraft. We have to do our lesson now. Come on. We have to do our lesson. Um, is there the student Dung? Are you there, Dung? Hello, Dung. Yes, I'm here. Dung, can you read your thing? Because you did a nice job on this. All right. Okay. And it's short, but it's really good. I really like it. Some of the short writing is just perfect, though, because you cover all the details, and that's what's important. Here you go. This is Doom. Uh, getting to the mountainous castle is an easy job. First of all, one has to travel all the way to the top of the Everest. Next, one should go forward for just over 10 kilometers. The traveler might see a small cave. If they don't, Try digging up some snow in the area, and they eventually find see the cave. After that, one goes through the cave. It will get much more complicated because some parts might be divided, and some could be blocked. But any part will take somebody to the exit. Exit. Mm. Then they will be surrounded. Then they will be surrounded by a lot of snow. The adventurer must find a way to get over it by either climbing or digging. Next, they will see the castle, but the journey hasn't finished yet. Next, the explorer has to go to a long maze. It's made from ice, so they can see through it, which makes it a lot easier. After that, the traveler will finally be greeted by the castle guards. It has been abandoned by the old Chinese, so there will be a lot of rare artifacts, and you could and make an explorer a lot of money <laughs> yeah doing it like that if you get to the old chinese you'll find some treasures in that old chinese fort you'll get some money nice work doing really good um doing you notice i changed this to explorer adventurer traveler just to give you some new words to use in your vocabulary but this is really nice work okay and there's just one more i want to do you guys and uh it is 
Uh, let's see. Um, Jennifer, is Jennifer here tonight? Uh, yes, I'm here. Jennifer, this is really nice. So let me put the share on and then we'll get Jennifer. I'm happy to hear from Jennifer and doing our new students because you both have unique writing styles that I haven't seen before. Here we go. This is Jennifer. Uh, okay. Uh, today, I will describe about a word made by cats where I want to get to. At first, when you walk into this world, you'll see a big gate which is made by rainbow clouds. Near the gate is a way to get inside the village. The village is on a hill, so there is an elevator bringing you up the village. When you arrive at the village, you'll see a lot of houses that are made by clouds. That is a place I want to get to. How about you? Yeah, I love these cloud cities, too, and I love the underwater cities. That's why I like Lewis's writing. And Jennifer, I like this, too, these imaginary cities. When I was a boy, there was a song about a city in the clouds, and I thought that was a really beautiful song. So thank you, Jennifer. It's really nice. Okay. Um, hey, Tim, you were sick last week, so I made something to cheer you up. Tonight, we're going to do, again, the questions how, when, where, who, this kind of question. So John 11, are you there? And Tim, are you there? I made a conversation to review who, when, where, what. Are you guys ready for the story, Tim and John? Of Tim course. and John, okay, you guys have to read together. So Tim, you have to turn your microphone on. Okay. And John, you have your microphone. So you two are gonna read this conversation, okay? All right, Tim, are you there? Tim, did you turn your microphone on? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and John, your microphone is on? Yes. Okay, and so here is the um, conversation I made for you. And see if you understand, this is just a joke. Okay, are you ready? So it's like Harry Potter, the John and Tim conversation in Hanoi train station. John, you can start. Okay. Hey, Tim, there's this new kid at school. He's from Hong Kong. I think you would think he's really funny. Sounds cool. What is, what's his name? Wen Hao. Sorry, what's his name? No, his <laughs> name isn't what? It's, <laughs> it's Wen Hao. <laughs> Well, I didn't ask you when or how. I asked you what's his, his name. When? How? Tim? I asked you what, what his name is. I didn't ask you for when or how. That's crazy, John. <laughs> no, you are crazy. I what his name is when. Oh. <laughs> oh, Tim. you even more crazy. I asked you what's his name, and you tell me when, how. I don't care when or how. I just want, I just want to know his name. I gotta go, Tim. I think we're about to get into a place I'm trying to explain to so thank you, you guys. I needed you to practice when, how, and what's, and who's, because that's what we're going to do for tonight's lesson. So you when can how? When, how? It sounds like a Chinese name, but we're going to do when, how. <laughs> okay. I know it's crazy, but I had fun writing that because Tim was sick last week, and you need cheering up, Mr. Tim. Okay. What is when, how, teacher? When, how? It just sounds like a name from some guy from Hong Kong Bone. So... The joke is, when, how? No, who, who is he? What's his name? When, how? No, no, what's his name? You know, that's an old American style comedy bone. Do you understand why it's funny? Because the American question, when and how, sound like a Chinese name, when, how? All right. Yeah. It's not a great joke. It's pretty good. <laughs> no, I thought it was funny because I knew Tim and John would be great readers. Okay, lesson four, interviewing Havy. Can you read lesson four interviewing? If you can read all this blue, please. Okay. Tonight we will study two kind of interview. The first is a warm up 
session to work um, together in class, we will imagine that we were interviewing someone famous. The second part is your homework where you can interview a family member or friend with several questions. To get started, do you remember the what, who, where, why, when, how? Question. Why, W plus how? Let's use the five W's and H to see what kind of question we could ask some one famous, some famous one to get you started. Yeah, so who do we see in picture number one, that famous singer, Havy? Who is she? I don't know. Oh, my gosh. That's I know. Fine. Tony, who is that? Taylor Swift. Yeah, do you like Taylor Swift? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. Do you think she's beautiful, Tony? Her, her voice is very... Very beautiful or powerful? Powerful. Powerful. Okay, good, Tony. Hey, Tony, uh, you answered that one. So let's see. I want to get some people I didn't call on before. Um, Ariel, are you there? It's good to see you, Ariel. Yes. yes. Hey, Ariel, um, do you know this guy in the orange shirt? Do you know this man? It's okay if you don't. How about John 12? Do you know who he is? He's from Malaysia. He's Chinese. He always says, hi -ya. No, I just know the picture of a man is cheering and Harry Potter. Okay. So you see Harry Potter. Yeah. All right. Does any know Ellis 12? Do you know who this is in the orange shirt who says, hi -ya. Do you know? Okay, how about Kitty? Hey, Kitty, do you know the guy in the orange shirt? Is Kitty there? Kitty? Uh, I'm here. Do you know the famous, he's a famous chef. He's in the orange shirt. He's Chinese, but he's from Malaysia. And he always says, hi -ya. Do you know this guy? Uh, I don't know this guy. Oh, okay, he's a famous chef. Uh, let me try one more. Is um, Gia Khan there? Gia Khan with the great galaxy. Yes. Gia Khan, do you know this famous chef? Uh, I have uh, seen him once, but I don't know much about him. He's a famous YouTube chef and he cooks. Yes. He's a genius at making fried rice and he hates how European chefs like Jamie Oliver is a famous British chef. Tim, do you know this guy? Never. Never heard of him. His name is Uncle Roger, you guys. Uncle Roger. Oh, I know. He's yeah, roasting the world's best uncle. chef. So, Jimmy, you know him, right? Jimmy, did you try his fried rice recipe? It's supposed to be really good. Mm, no. Teacher, I have COVID. You have? Yeah, who is that? Who is, who is me. it? Wait, who's me? It's me. Konradio. You said you have you have COVID. What? Did you say you have heard it or I cooked it? I cooked it. Yeah. How was it? Was it a good recipe? Oh, it's Red Army. I'm sorry, Red Army. How yeah, was? Uh... It's very good, but it's very meatless. Oh, okay, so there's no meat in it. Can you tell me what's in his famous Uncle Roger rice? Ah, uh, it's only egg, uh, onion. Let me remember what is this uh -huh. spring rolls, yeah. chili, uh -huh. MSG, <laughs> MSG, yeah, uh, soy sauce, yeah, uh, sh okay, shallot. That's all. Hey, Red Army, do you think MSG is not good for your brain? It makes you dizzy, it's good, yeah, it king of good. flavor, fool you. <laughs> Because the American said to the Chinese restaurant, stop putting MSG in the fried rice because it's making people dizzy and they got into car accidents driving oh, sure. from the restaurant. Yeah. So, but that was like 30 years ago, Red Army. Oh, okay. 
right. Um, hey, Havy, raising your hand. What do you have to say, Havy? What is SSD? Oh, it's monosodium glutamate. It's a white powder. It's one of flavor. Yeah, adds a lot of flavor to Asian cooking. It's delicious. Teacher, yeah. What What did you sign? Could you uh, write in the screen, please? Okay, yeah, MSG, it's just three letters. Red Army, you're a great cook, so you know all about this. Red Army, I forgot you're a great cook. MSG okay. equals monosodium glutamate. And so it has this really nice, it takes any flavor and it makes the flavor stronger, Tim, and heavy, monosodium glutamate. But they said that there are all these stories of people getting dizzy driving home from the restaurant. So you shouldn't use it. But Red Army, you know that it's really good, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You're like the genius at cooking. I forgot about that. I'm sorry, Red Army. Okay, thanks. Hey, do you guys see these um, questions here? These are questions you would ask a famous person like Uncle Roger. Um, Dan Radcliffe is Harry Potter. This is Messi, the soccer player. And then this is, um, what's her name? Taylor Swift. Hey, John 12, are you there? No, yes, teacher. I, I need you to talk because you have a good speaking and reading voice. John, can you read these questions? Yes, question one, what are your most Famous invitation. invitation. Yeah. Number two, who impressed you most when you were a kid? Yeah. Number three, where is your where is your oldest home? Yeah. Number four, what and did your first time notice that you had become famous? Number five, why did you become so famous? Number six, how exactly did you become a footballer? Number seven, why did you like to start doing what do what you do best? Number eight, why did you even want to become famous? Okay, so these questions are really funny. Last night, Saturday night's reading a writing class created these questions. So this is good because we can save time. I'm going to put them in the chat box if they'll let me here. Sometimes, yeah, it's perfect. They let me do it. Yay. So if you look in your chat box, you can see all the questions there. So what I want to do in the uh, breakout rooms with um, teacher assistant Helen is if you want to take half the class and I can stay with half the class in the main room, um, could the students pick one student and they become a famous person like Messi, Taylor Swift, Uncle Roger, Harry Potter. And then the students can ask them these questions and the one student can create their own fantasy answers. They don't have to be true answers. They can just be pretend answers, make-believe answers, all right? So you have to choose one student. We could probably play this two times for the next 15 or 20 minutes if you would like, Helen. Yes, it's okay for me. Like, uh, let's see, I will take two students so that they can change your turn. Yeah. H how many would you like? Maybe half. Half, yeah, okay. So you and I are here, so that's 17 students. So we have eight and nine. Um, I can take eight in the main room here if that's okay. And yeah. uh Okay, so we just need one breakout room because I'm going to keep these guys here and we'll create and then I'll just pull them out. Everyone's going to the room right now. And your questions, you have to pick one one student. You are the famous person. Everybody else ask you questions. This way you all get a chance to speak and understand the when, where, who, because tonight's theme is interviewing someone famous and homework is I'll tell you that in just a minute. Okay, here we go. We're opening the rooms. Okay. okay. And then as soon as they go in, I'll start pulling students out. Hi, teacher. Hey, Bone. Do you want to stay in the main room with me? All right, yeah, Bone. Of course. Okay. <laughs> Let's okay. see. I'll put uh, Dung in here. Ms. Havy can join the main session. Uh, Let's see, Jennifer can join the main session. Mr. John 12 can join the main session. Uh, let's go with Liam here to the main session. And let's go to Mr. Tony to the main session. I want to know some of these new students, so um, I'll bring them in here. So we have Doong and Jimmy and Bone and Havy and John and Lewis, and maybe just one more. Uh, let's go, Tony. All right. And let's see, did Tony make it? 
some students are confused. They say, hey, what just happened? I moved rooms. <laughs> All right. So Bone, would you like to be the famous person? Uh, I think yes. Yeah, because okay. like famous person is like easily rich, but like there's some there's some not there's some things that are not good because like they keep they keep asking us for uh autographs and yes. like autographs and we like we cannot have enough time with our family All because right. they keep looking at us. Yeah. All right. Let me put in the messages. Your own question is, what things make you angry as a famous person? There you go. Thanks, Bone. There's a new question. What things make you angry as a famous person? So, Bone, what famous person do you want to be? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> it's cute. I don't know. Hey, John 11, what famous person should we be in this class? Is John there? Hey, Dung, who do you think we should be as the famous person in our class? Uh, do you know the person, Trương Mỹ Lam? No, is it Vietnamese? Yeah. Uh, okay. She got that sentence because she do like fraud and she got really famous because yeah. She throws all the money into the beach and everyone uh, is flying there to try to find her money. Oh my God. Is, 600,000 is million Vietnamese dong. Yeah, isn't it like unbelievable money and the government put her in prison? She already died. She got oh, she died. So her treasure is somewhere on the beach? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you guys know this story? John, you do you know this? You go to the beach, dig some dirt up, and you might find a whole, whole castle of cash down there. Is, is it cash or is it gold? Cash or gold, I don't know, or even silver. Maybe even diamonds. Hey, John, what if it's underneath the palm tree behind you? <laughs> eh? Hey? <laughs> this is a foreign beach. <laughs> a Vietnamese beach. Oh, okay. Hey, Havy, would you like to ask Dung a question about this famous lady and her hidden treasure? Okay, I'll ask, why did you become so rich? How did you become so rich, Dung, if you are the lady? Uh, I, like, uh, can you, well, I need to search up one word. Yeah. You can search for a word. Okay. Hey, Lewis, do you know this story of this rich lady who hid a treasure on a beach? Yeah, I, I know, but um, I think it's a fake news that, he, that she throw on her money into the beach. Yeah. Are people I looking for it, it, Lewis? It's not true. It's not true? No, it's you... fake. It's just like a joke. Oh, it's a like joke a joke. On the internet, yeah. Are there any people who like take shovels and try to find it? Like you no. go to the beach, you know, you want to go swimming and you see some guy with a shovel. You say, what are you doing? I'm looking for the treasure. <laughs> it's funny. Hey. This is so dumb. Yeah, it's just a strange. You guys, that's called an urban myth, by the way. Urban myth means, urban means city and myth means just like a crazy story, an urban myth. All right. Um, hey, Lewis, can you think of someone famous to be? Oh, famous? I think maybe like Taylor Swift or uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. I don't know. Okay. A lot so, of famous person in the world. All right. Let's see. Daisy, are you there? Yes. Daisy, do you like Taylor Swift? What? Do you like do you like Taylor Swift? Yeah, um, not much. Not much. Who do, you, who do you like, Daisy? What TV person or movie or cartoon character? I don't <laughs> That's your know. sister. You don't know. Do you have a cartoon character you like? What? Do you have a cartoon character you like? Yes. 
<laughs> John, why are you hitting America with an ICBM? <laughs> I don't understand, John. Why? I thought no, we were it's, it's a dropping an atomic bomb on America. But there is no nuclear stuff. It's a friendly bomb. It has foe. <laughs> It's the faux bomb. All right, Mr. Faux bomb. Wait, I want to go back to that nice girl. What's her name? Daisy. Daisy, I didn't finish talking to you because John dropped a faux bomb on America. And I thought America and Vietnam were friends again. Hey, Daisy. Yes. <laughs> Daisy, is that your sister next to you? Yes. Did she help My you with cousin. your English? Did she help you with your English? No, she just gave me some examples. Okay, she's giving you some examples. So who did you choose? Harry Potter. Harry Potter? Yes. Oh, that's cute. Okay. John Drill, yeah. do you know Harry Potter? Yes, that's your famous uh, story of a kid uh, it's going to become a witch. Yeah. And so... Do you think Harry Potter enjoys being a wizard? And I think he didn't because uh, when he became a, a a witch, I think many trouble became to her to him, like being caught by many people and someone gonna he gonna be killed by many people. Yeah. So that's that question. Why do you why did you start doing what you do best? Harry became the greatest witch, right, at Hogwarts in hundreds of years. No. Wizard. No. Wizard. I'm sorry, John. John, I love it. So I, that question, do you see in the chat, I highlighted it said, why did you like to start doing what you do best? And John 12 said, no, he didn't like to be a wizard because people were trying to kill him. So Daisy, it's an interesting choice. Let's ask Doom. Doom, do you like the Harry Potter series? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Do you think Harry Potter finally enjoyed being a wizard or did he continue to hate it his whole life? Uh, I don't think he would really enjoy uh, being a wizard because like uh, of the of his past life, it was kind of, kind of traumatizing for him. Yeah. And uh, it would make him less want to still be a wizard in the future. Yeah. So... Do you know the actor's name is Daniel Radcliffe? Yes, I do. Yeah, so if we look at this picture of Daniel Radcliffe now, you can see um, that he, if you want, if you say, what did Harry Potter look like when he got older? We can look at Daniel Radcliffe um, picture, and then we can see what Harry Potter would look like when he got older. So here we go, you guys. Are you ready? This is Harry Potter at like age... 35 is it now do you see this is what he looks like now so if harry potter was like 35 years old you guys this is what he would look like because that's daniel radcliffe the actor who played him right and this is even cooler he looks really cool there interesting he has a lot of hair he's a lucky guy <laughs> oh. hey bone do you like harry potter oh yes sir. bone do you think he looks cool here Oh, yes. Yeah, that lucky would be a pretty... Boy. Yeah, lucky guy, because he made seven Harry Potter movies, Bone. So this guy's very, very rich. He probably has about $200 million, this guy. So that would be nice, huh? Hey, John, do you know, you raised your hand, how much money does Daniel Radcliffe have? Do you know? I don't know, but I only know... Uh, that Emma Watson acted Hermione. Uh, yeah. You guys, uh, do you want to see, we could, uh, I'll put that in chat. You could ask a how question. How much money do you have? But it's kind of an embarrassing question you shouldn't ask, you know, someone really famous. But you can find that on the internet, right? So you go to Google and you say, um, how much is Daniel... Radcliffe worth? And this is the famous Google question. Um, okay, I was right. It's about $140 million because it's British pounds are, uh, he's worth 95 million British pounds, you guys. And so if we do pounds, 
pounds. Let's do British pounds to dong, you guys. All right. All right. So he's worth 90, uh, 90 million. Oh, this is hard. They didn't put the commas in, you guys. 90. Okay. So in Vietnam Dong, this is how much he's worth. But you can't see the other numbers. It's just a really huge number, you guys. There we go. Okay, so let me paste this and then I'll put it in chat. So he is worth this much Dong. And into chat it goes. Uh, stop share. Chat. And then you can look at this really crazy huge number, everybody. Okay, so that's his how much money he has, Johnny Levin and Bone, Daniel Radcliffe in chat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you, John. Do you think it's a lot of money, John? I think if I had that much money, I'll, I would buy the whole world. <laughs> hey, you would buy a, a Harry Potter castle on the beach. That sounds nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Who else do we have? Let's uh, let's check uh, with Jimmy. I didn't talk to you, Jimmy. How are you, Jimmy? I'm fine. Jimmy, did you like Harry Potter? Mm, yes, I yeah. watched uh, the like the last the seventh Harry Potter. Yeah, all seven movies. Did you read the books too, Jimmy? No. Okay, because some of the kids in Vietnam read the English and some read the Vietnamese books. So let me ask the question, Havy, do you like Harry Potter? I don't read that story. Do you read books in English? Yeah, a lot. I have a lot. A lot, yeah. a lot. Can you tell me your favorite book in English, Havy? My favorite book in English is the <laughs> A lot I can, can yeah. but yeah. I need to think. Okay, you can think about it. That's fine. I just want to ask you some questions so you get a chance to speak tonight. Oh. <laughs> it, that is a kind of book that I learn. Not the book we like, we like to read. I learn it. I, it's very nice. It's a national geographic book. Do you have the book next to you? Can you pull it from the shelf? There it is, yay, Reading Explorer. Okay, is that the book? Oh, National Geographic. Wow, you know, Havy, I was teaching that to Japanese college students and you guys are already reading that, Reading Explorer 4. I guess, yeah, nice work, Havy. Those are really wonderful stories, the National Geographic. Do you guys know that series, that textbook, National Geographic? Bone, do you know the National Geographic Explorer series? Yes, it is. Yeah, do you use it in school or at home? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I watch the TV programs at home. Okay, yeah, it's a wonderful series. What kind of programs do you like? <laughs> John, your uh, classmate. I like, like, Mechanic programs. Oh, okay. Mechanical, mechanical what? Mechanical. Programs. Oh, programs. How to make machines? Are they intelligent machines, Bone, with like CPUs for like brains in the machine? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, I like those too. Yeah, I have a big story there, but it would take too long. Uh, I had a great idea one day, and then somebody already used my idea because I waited one year bone, and it was to put CPU technology in Legos. So when you complete the Lego, you could make your Legos do something really cool. And I said, I should send that idea to Lego company headquarters in Denmark and make good money. And then one year later, a group of Israeli researchers created CPU Legos. You make the Legos and it creates a function for a robot. So Boone, they, they didn't take my idea. They just had the same idea at the same time. 
and that became the new Lego series of like CPU circuit chip Legos, right? So if you have a great idea, try to get your great idea quickly because somebody might use it already. All right. Okay, you guys, you did a pretty good job. I see these what question. John 11, you said, what song do you like the most? The world's smallest violin. What does that, is that a joke? What does that no, mean? It's the world's smallest violin is a song. Oh, it's a song. Okay. I'm so laughing. that's practically, practically the song I like the most. Oh, because I knew a, a young lady from Australia named Jade and somebody was crying and she said, oh, this is the tiny violin. I'm crying with you. And she was making fun of the person for crying. And I couldn't believe she did that. <laughs> but okay. it's a real song and it's super hilarious. It is. Praise yeah, I'll, I can send the lyrics for you. Okay, send the lyrics. That's fine. And All I'll right. type it by myself. All right, let's go back to the main room, everybody, because um, we'll close all the rooms because we have to get ready for part two of the lesson, which is interviewing your relative, okay? It's going to interview your best friend, and I have to show you some questions to use for that. So let me get my next thing ready, and I'll take down this Harry Potter thing. Somebody's asking a question in Saturday about the homework, and so I have to help that person there. Okay. So first, uh, let me get this share screen back as people are coming. Uh, let me just take a quick look at this, you guys. You guys get a preview of it. Uh, oh, my, these questions are really funny. OK. Uh, OK, we, I'll wait until all the students come back. OK, everybody's coming back. OK, good, good, good. So this is the homework, you guys, for tonight. I just want to check these questions. Um, these students made these last night. It's a what question, a who, where, when, why, how, and why. Remember, we were talking to someone famous, so we created all of these questions. But uh, one student's really funny. Um, Susu said her mother eats too much cheesecake. Alice, you remember little Susu from the debate class? <laughs> She's so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so she asked, she's going to ask her mom this question. What kind of cheesecake do you like the most? <laughs> you know? But I said, be careful. If your mom is fat, she might not like that question, right? So that's why I thought Susu was a mischievous question. Hey, Liam, how are you? I have to talk to Liam. Hello, Liam. Yes, teacher. Liam, did you have a good breakout session talking to someone famous? Mm, yes. Yeah, who was your famous person? Um... My famous person is I meet at the beach. Yeah. Um, he's uh, he's an actor, but I don't know his name much. But I yeah. have, uh, I have shook his hand. You shook his hand on the beach. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Were there a lot of people around him? Yeah, there's a really lot. I think it's a crowd. It was a crowd, yeah. Was he happy with that or was he a little embarrassed or nervous? Well, he's like he's quickly because he didn't have a lot of things to do. Oh, okay, so he didn't mind if people were coming up and shaking his hand? Yeah, he did people... shake up a few people. Yeah, hey Tim, people. what do you say? Look at the chat box. Oh, this better be crazy. I'm gonna, Tim, I wanna see what's in this chat box. Okay, sorry about this, Liam. Mr. Tim wrote, <laughs> when how yes of course these are the when how questions this is oh no billy is back all right so um liam can i go back to you do you know this word siblings because i was surprised how many students know siblings Havy, you know siblings yes i know yeah, it. you guys learned this word already yeah, brothers, it means brothers, yeah. brothers and sisters. Havy, do you have any brothers or sisters? Um, no, I don't have any. Okay. Do you want to have a brother or sister? Um, no, I I play with one of my cousins, and I feel very tired to play with yeah. him. He is uh, like he is very annoyed. 
annoying. See, that's what the girls say about the little boys. They say they are annoying. So yesterday, a really funny student named Kathy in the morning class for American English, she said, my little sister is so annoying. I'm trying to study and she asked me crazy questions, okay? Uh, let's see, Ariel, are you there? I have to talk to Ariel. Hello, Ariel. Hey, Ariel, um, do you have any pets in your family? Like a dog or cat or fish or bird? I don't have, but I really want to have a pet. Oh, okay. What what pet would you like? Uh, I think a, a puppy. Oh, that's cute. So one of the students yesterday asked, um, he, he wants to ask his father, why do you like pets so much? Because they have three dogs, four cats, 23 birds in their house somewhere in... Uh, Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh City, I forget. In a big city, they have all these pets. So he's going to ask his father, why do you have so many? Why do you like pets so much? This was a really nice question that one of the students is going to ask her mother. Um, John 12, you have the laughing thing. What's going on, John 12? I think that's just a pet shop or something, but I think it's not really real. Well, this was a question he was going to ask his father. So this is what the homework, guys. You have to pick your favorite family member and ask them a who, what, when, where, why, and how question. So, John, who's your favorite family member, your favorite relative? I think that my mom or my uh, younger brother. Okay, so if you um, could ask your mom a question, which of these questions would you like to ask your mom? Or you can change it because these are last night's questions. I think that when, when do you usually teach me English? Okay, when do you usually teach you English? Does your mother teach you English? Uh, yes, she teaches me a lot. Oh, that's interesting because there's a, a boy named Tony whose mother teaches him English too, John, and he reads a lot. So he has this incredible vocabulary and he has a unique style of writing as well. He's very advanced, but his mother teaches him English. So I asked him this question, John, when do you usually teach me English? And Tony said it's every day. <laughs> so does your mother teach you English every day, John? Yes, uh, every day. Does she ask you questions or read together with you? Yes, she uh, practice with me and asking me. Maybe she gave me some uh, stir, some lesson about uh, writing or reading. And sometimes just like uh, explain me about the homework or something. Is she a teacher? No, she's just a normal person. She's okay, down. a normal person. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, Louis, who's your favorite relative? Um, my favorite relative is my grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. Okay. Could you think of a question to ask him, like this one, maybe, or? Uh, maybe uh, when were you born? Okay, when and... were you born? Yeah. And uh, how do you find the energy to work so much? Yeah, because some of the students say their mothers and fathers work really hard. Is really good, Lewis. Alice, I mean, I mean that the uh, how, how my grandfather find the energy to work so much in the past yeah. not now. What does he do? What's his work? Uh he, he is an engineer. Oh, an engineer, yeah. 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 Okay. Let's see. Um, Alice, who's your favorite family member? Um, my sister. Okay. And what kind of question could you ask your sister? Uh, I can ask her, um, why do you eat so much? <laughs> I was going to say that just for a joke. Does she like to eat? No, uh, she's not. Okay. Is she slim or is she a little heavy? Um, she's really thin. She's really thin, yeah. My sister could eat a lot too. She loved to eat sweets and she stayed really thin. 
So I, I, those people are interesting to me. She used to eat a lot of chocolate pie. <laughs> All right. Hey, Liam, are you there? Liam? Yes, teacher. Liam, who's your favorite relative? Uh, my uncle. Okay, uncle. And um, can you ask him a question? Any? I guess I I I asked this question many times. Uh, my uncle really like playing games, so I ask him about a lot of um, games. Okay, computer games or PlayStation. Oh, PlayStation. Okay. How do you play um, this special PlayStation? Device. Yeah, device. So you could ask him that. So that's yeah. what the homework is. You guys try to ask um, the five W's plus how equals six questions. And so these are just sample questions, you know, cheesecake and stuff, right? So let me... Um, we have five minutes left. Let me ask you to ask a question each and I'll write them here for you, for your class, because these are last night's questions. Tim, are you there? Mr. Tim. Thank you. Tim, can you make a question for us? Um, and it's gonna be a question you ask a family member. Uh, what type of food do you like to cook most? Okay. Nice, Tim. All right, let's go to John 11 from Hanoi. Can you ask a question for a family member? Okay, I will ask my brother that. Why do you bang your head on the wall a lot? <laughs> That's your brother? Yes, yeah. That's a really funny question. <laughs> All right. Alice, would you like to ask a question? Do you want to stay with that? Why do you eat so much, Alice? Yeah. Yeah, you don't mind? I don't know. Okay. That was last night's question, but you can use it. All right. Bowen, can you think of a question to ask a family member? Uh, I think I'll ask uh, uh, I'll ask my little brother, why do you always steal my objects? Okay. <laughs> Hey, Bone, I'm going to change that. Why do you always steal my things, right? <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's really annoying. <laughs> All right. Uh, Liam, can you think of a question to ask a family member? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, like, uh, I ask my mom. Okay. I, I ask a lot of difficult questions so she can know, such as... Um, what uh, what what is the animal what is the animal in the world that have most aunt has the most arms aunt aunts yeah a n t like the little insect no uh i mean a u n t okay what animal has the most aunts all right is there an answer to that? Yes, I can. Uh, elephant. Oh, an elephant. Oh, okay. Hey, Tony, you have a question? Tony, Tony, are you there? Where's Tony? I didn't call on you so much. I have to call on Tony. Tony! What happened to Tony? Uh -huh. All right. How about uh, Red Army? Can you think of a question to ask a family member? I ask, like, uh, do you love me? Do you oh, love yeah. me? Yeah. That's a nice question, Red Army. That's a really beautiful question, actually. Gia Khan, can you think of a question to ask a family member? Is Gia there? Gia Khan? Yes. Can you think of a question to ask a family member? Uh, teacher, mm -hmm. my microphone is a little bit terrible. Yeah, it's a little soft, Tony. Hey, Tony, I can hear you. Would you like to ask a question? I had a 
question, yes. All right. How do you how do you think about being a billionaire? <laughs> okay. How do you like being a billionaire? Is one of your relatives a billionaire? So, Tony, remember, this is for a family member. So maybe it's a secret that they're a billionaire, Tony. All right. Let me see. Um, we have Jennifer. Are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you think of a question to ask a family member? Um... Mm. I think it's, what is your favorite birthday present? Oh, that's a nice one. What is your favorite birthday present? That's a nice question, Jennifer. Jimmy, can you think of a question to ask a family member? Uh, um, hmm. I'll put these here. These are good questions here. Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, I can't, I can't think. Okay, that's fine. Hey, V, would you like to try? Yes, I will ask my mom. If you had to wish, and um, what did you do wish the last week? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no thing. Oh, I know ha, what is the not, uh, question. That in a week, I can. Weeks. I can talk to you. It <laughs> can. Uh, it not a week. It a wishes. Oh, okay. So if you had ten Tito, wishes, I oh my gosh, maybe I was gonna say to ask the relative. I know, I would be shocked if some relative asked me that question. So yeah. if you had 10 wishes, what would be your last wish? Um, All right. And my mom say that my last wish is to uh, have 10 more wishes. Oh, that, yeah, but you know, they always say you can't ask for more wishes, Havy. They always say that in those stories, right? <laughs> hey, Ariel. Can you give us a question? Come. You, you. I would like to ask my sister, why do you always steal my things and break Ooh. them? Ooh. <laughs> so, Bone, this is like your question, but look at this, Bone. It's a little bit more terrible. The sister breaks uh, the things, Bone. So she doesn't just steal, she breaks them. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Hey, um, Lewis, did you give us a question already? Was it, why do you work so hard? Was that? Um, let, let me think. Okay. Doom, would you like to try? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I would ask my mom hmm. uh, to know why she married my dad. Is it a happy marriage? Uh, yes, but uh, my dad is uh, getting like um, much different from how she told the story. She said that my dad yeah. was really kind and now he is really strict. Yes, this is true, Tony. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Doom, this is, this is a really important question. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Hey, Tim, did you give us a question? Oh. Good. Question to Billy. Uh, oh, well, if. Hey, uh, Tim, if, put your question there. Do you uh, see it? Oh, uh, I would put it in the chat, chat box. Okay. okay. This is a joke question for Tim. Are you more intelligent than me? <laughs> for a little brother Billy. Okay. There, you're gonna put it in the chat box. All right. 
Let's go back to Lewis. Lewis, did you think of a question? Yes. Uh, okay, what I is will, it? I will ask my friend Father Beth, uh, what is happening with the world when he was a child? Okay, what was happening yeah. in the world? How old is he? Uh, he is, I, I think that's uh, more, more than 70. Oh, 70, 70 years old. So yeah. in the 1950s and 60s, was it Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, the time of uh, Vietnam War, you know. Yeah, that was like 25 years of nonstop war, Louis. So, yeah, that was a pretty terrible time for Vietnam. Teacher, yeah. yes, I said, Tim. To, all right, I Tim, said Tim, to be good. Tim, what do you got here? If you have to eat one food, in, <laughs> Tim, all right, Tim, I'm gonna put this for everybody to see. Teacher, look at the chat box. Okay, if you could only eat one food. <laughs> For the rest of your life, what would you eat? <laughs> it's funny. Let's see. Uh, let's see another chat. What is? Oh yeah, Jimmy. Okay, yeah. What are? What will be? So Jimmy, if the person's gonna die, you say, "What will be your last words?" What will be your last words? That's actually really cool too. Thanks, Jimmy. All right, you uh, guys. Yeah. Is a uh, what will be your last words? Yes. I. Oh. Uh, I. Uh. I know. What is it? <laughs> yes, to me. You know the answer to that. <laughs> All right. Hey, Lewis. Did you have a question? Um, I, I think that's it. Um, oh, you already answered. Okay. Are right, you guys, do you see how I just copied that? I'm going to put that into the yellow chat box for sample questions for your homework, okay? Because these are really good questions that you guys came up with. And that was about 10 minutes of work, but it was really good work, you guys. So I go to Yalo. And these are your questions. So if you check Yalo, you're gonna see all of these in Yalo, okay? And so for your homework, write the question, but then also write the answer. So there should be 10 questions, uh, six questions and six answers. You can ask more if you like, but make sure you really talk to the person, the, um, the interview, okay? All right, and John 11, thank you for the nuclear cake. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, can I say goodbye to everybody? Uh, Teacher Helen, thanks for doing the breakout rooms with the young students. Um, Thank you. I hope their answers were good. And uh, they're very funny tonight. I, I laugh at everything they do. All right. So Ariel, thank you. And Dung, thanks. Lewis, thanks. Tim, thank you. Jimmy, thank you. Bye-bye, Bye-bye, Alice. Bye-bye, Bye -bye, Bone. Bye bye, Liam. Bye bye, Tony. Bye bye, Alice. Bye bye, John 11. Bye bye, John 12. Bye bye, Liam. Bye, teacher. Bye bye, Heavy. Bye bye, Tony. Bye bye, Jimmy. Bye bye, you guys. Take care, Lewis. See you guys.